Amen. Would you pat yourself on your back and say, wow, this is a great place for me to be. I'm so glad I'm here. Amen. Amen. This morning as I was, uh, I got, I was coming to myself in, in my sleep and I heard this, uh, this scripture. We're going to go to it this morning to open up where the Lord is going to take us. Are you ready? Stand up on your feet, take your Bibles in your hands, and repeat after me, this is my Bible, this is God's Word to me, and I believe what it says. Amen. If you're visiting with us today for the first time, we thank God for each of you being here with us, and we pray that your feet will get uh, 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 just kind of tied right in this place. There's a bubble cup in your seat. <laughs> To hold you and to make you come back. Amen. Amen. Say it again. This is, this is my Bible. And this is God's word to me. And I believe what it says. Who it says I am. Therefore, my father loves me. 
because I laid down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. And I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. For this is the command that I have received from my Father. Is that good? Yes. Somebody say that's real good. That's real. Say that's really, really good. That's really, really good. The thief coming but to what? Steal, heal, and uh huh. But I have come that you might have life. say loud, life. life. All right now. The opposite of life is death. Yeah. He said, now, death is what the thief comes to bring. But I come to bring life. Keep that word in your mind, life. This morning, I want to speak from the subject, choose life. Say it again. Tell somebody, look at it and say, this morning.
cause a problem. And that was my first lesson in church growth. And then I began to experience different things, different ways, different things in my own life. I remember when I grieved my first husband. I grieved my Lord for years, grieving, mourning over that. I remember when I lost my first child, I had a miscarriage of four children. I grieved that. And I found out that as a human being, we have the propensity to crave dead things. Some people lose a mate and never move on. Never move on. Stay mourning. Stay in depression. Can't clean out the house. Can't move on. Can't have another good relationship. Because as human beings, there is something in us. I believe because we are dying, we crave death. Stay with me this morning. Yes. It is important that we understand at the beginning of this message that Jesus comes to give life. And not just life, but to give life more abundantly. And that it is the thing that comes to speak, to kill, and to destroy. Because death is a distraction to life. Let me say that again. Death is a distraction to life. If you are still living in a dead dream, then you are distracted from a future, future plan that God has for you that you will never achieve because you are still mourning a dead dream, a dead relationship. You can never move forward until you say bye-bye to dead things. And sometimes they die because maybe we are careless. Or maybe we weren't mature enough to handle it. But once it dies, you must leave dead things alone. I'm going somewhere. I'm headed somewhere. I want you to look at this scripture. Now I saw this in Numbers uh, chapter number 19. Let's just go there for just a moment. God is always bringing life. Hallelujah. God is always bringing life. Yes. Jesus comes that we might have life and have it to the abundance. Anytime you are still mourning or grieving something that is dead, shake yourself. Yes. That is why we're here on Resurrection Sunday. Yes. Because God sent Jesus to conquer death. He sent him to take the sting out of the death and to take the victory out of the grave. He wants us to live. He wants us to be forgiving. He wants us to be in motion, to be able to say, okay, that might not have been the best thing to do, but I'm not going to mourn it. I'm not going to read it. I'm going to say to God, forgive me through the precious blood of Jesus. And I'm going to get up and keep moving. I love that song that says, I'm moving forward. Moving forward. I was speaking to uh, the prophet the other day. She said, they want me to come back to my job. I said, never go back. Never go back. Don't care how appealing they make it. Don't care how good it looks. We have a tendency to not be able to let go of death. Which keeps us from moving into the living future. And sometimes somebody had to pronounce it. I remember when I was in nursing, a person could die on the table, and we would resuscitate and do everything we could to get them back 
and you had all the full seats and everybody was swinging from the rafters. And if you're not careful, you'll grieve it. You'll mourn it. You'll keep referring to it. I remember when we was, I remember we, I remember where we go. I'm not talking about where we was. That was cool. But that was 1987. That was 1988. It's 2013. God has something for me today. God has something in 2014. God 